are in the trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. Reminder, take part in the great giveaway being done by First Star Logistics each week the Bengals play. Dave Lapham was on the call on the First Star Logistics Bengals radio network as the Cincinnati Bengals fall 34-11 to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Lap ugly, 34-11, the Bengals fall to the Steelers. Now They're now 8-7. and seven. Still no wins in the AFC North. No, that's the that's the key, and and uh, every other team in the AFC North has at least three. Uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh have three division wins. Baltimore has four, and the Bengals don't have any. So, uh, if if it was going to get down to the tiebreaker level in the division, they were in trouble anyway. And the, the more the only wins they could gather would be two. So, uh, you know, they had to win two out of three. They didn't get this one done. They have to win the last two games of the season. Uh, to probably keep themselves in a in a playoff pos- hunt position, um, it was uh, it was tough. You know, you look at it. Statistics or numbers are can be deceiving, and um, when you when you look at the the final numbers on the on the game, the total net yards were only you know less than tw- twenty yards difference. Um, but the, the red things like red zone, Bengals not scoring any points on red zone drives, not just field, not field goals, not, not anything. I mean, having those kind of problems in the red zone, uh, being stopped twice on fourth down, which is like another turnover, three interceptions. So in my mind, there's five giveaways. You get the ball away, you know, m- more than two times in the NFL, you're in trouble. You go minus two. So, I mean, there were, there were a lot of reasons that, uh, they didn't, couldn't get this uh, get this done, and there there were big reasons. Obviously, the the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, I think, had had enough. Um, you know, all this conversation, Mike Mike Tomlin moving on, having a having a meeting with the Roonies and and jointly agreeing that he moves on and they go in another direction. And I think he got his football team ready to play. And I think he probably said to the leaders, "Look, you know, we got guys we're having trouble with, but there are a lot of guys in this football team that want to play well." They want us to finish the season the right way. Let's go out and play football. And, and uh, it was the last home game for their crowd base, their home crowd, and uh, and they responded. And the key was getting off to the early start. I mean, building that 21 nothing lead, that's what I was hoping would happen in the Bengals' favor. I was hoping, you know, get a couple of uh, early scores and and put them in a situation where, geez, um, maybe, uh, maybe the, the cracks in the foundation are bigger than we thought. Well, it didn't work that way, and the Bengals uh, the Bengals got out to a big deficit, and the Steelers got out to an early lead, and it just uh, you know they they just pranced to the finish line from there. Yeah, you saw the day why Mike Tomlin's been in charge of the Steelers for so long. As you said, he had his team ready to play um, early on. It didn't take very long. Uh, it, it always seems that if a quarterback, you know, you don't expect much out of an opponent quarterback especially when they come in, they haven't played for a while or whatever. Mason Rudolph continues that trend with a big game, and he hit it early on. Uh, George Pickens, no matter what anyone was saying leading up to this game about his effort, uh, enjoyed a big day and and early on, 86-yard touchdown pass uh, early in the first quarter. And really the first half, this team did not uh, just could not find themselves. Uh, just They shot themselves in the foot. Well, the explosive plays were the were the key. You know, Pickens had four catches for 195 yards, average almost 49 yards a catch, two touchdowns on on four catches. So, um, the explosive plays, the big plays were were obviously huge. The Bengals were only able to answer with one of them by T. Higgins. Um, so they that that was that was the deal. They they were they were getting uh, the Bengals in. Um, coverages, you know, man coverages, one-on-ones, and they were winning. Um, so the pressure wasn't getting there quickly enough, and they were winning uh, their one-on-one routes and, and turned a couple, three of them into, into explosives that, uh, you know, that, that just kill you. Lap, has the, the injuries just piled up to the amount to where you just you can only handle so many injuries in a season, and the Bengals have seen their share this year? They have, but uh, Pittsburgh, they were they were down four safeties. They were down basically all their linebackers. I mean, they had got they were bringing guys up off of injured reserve, off the practice squad, to play safety. They uh, moved Patrick Peterson inside from corner to play safety. I mean, they were going through the same thing, and they uh, they ran a lot of zone coverages. Uh, they probably played more zone than they typically have or do. 
um, you just gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to to get through get through a game and get through the season. I mean, the attrition around the National Football League is is a real thing. It's a uh, a violent game played by grown men. So there's gonna be everybody's gonna suffer their share of injuries. There's no doubt. As you said, numbers sometimes don't tell the whole story. Three interceptions by Jake Browning, that was huge in this football game. Um, you know, talk about how this team has to rebound. As you said, you got to win out. You got to go to Kansas City and, and beat them, and then you have your final game of the season at Paycor. Uh, you, you need to get two wins as you want to keep any hope alive to have a chance to get in. Yeah, and and by the same same token. Pittsburgh Steelers have to go on the road to Seattle and to Baltimore. So, you know, that that's not an easy easy trail either. In fact, the Bengals and, and the Steelers have uh, the third and fourth toughest schedule in the AFC to finish the season. So, um, obviously, this game did not turn out the way you anticipated that it, that it might. But uh, you can't let one bad game turn into two. You have to put this one away, learn from it, you know, watch the tape, learn from the mistakes – but then put it away, move on, and don't let it, uh, you know, poison uh, anything that you're trying to get done the last two weeks of the season. Because, I mean, that's that's life. In, this is life in the National Football League. Sometimes you get the bear. Sometimes the bear gets you. And, um, you know, this this football game was obviously didn't turn out anywhere near the way you had hoped. But um, on the on the record, it's same as a one point loss. You know, I mean, you just gotta you just gotta move on. Talk, I mean, you get to this part of the season, every, as you said, everyone's kind of beat up. You, you, it's, it's a long season, even longer now than and maybe before. Um, the mindset of a player as they're going through the daily grind, getting ready each week for a game, and, and the, the disappointment, because they have to be getting on the bus to get on the plane to come back home and be totally disappointed. Talk about how a player's mindset is going into another week where you know you got to come back from this. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it's only a 45-minute flight, which is good, instead of uh, having to fly in from the coast. Um, and then you get Christmas with your family, um, so that you know will, will get you uh, your your mind in a in a positive place. And then and then you do you just have to go back to work. I mean, you have to have selective amnesia. You just have to you have to move on. You have to realize that uh, it went right eight times and it's gone wrong seven times, and you you got to continue to make it go right. That's that's basically what it's all about. And, you know, it, it, it changes week to week. Matchups change week to week. Injuries are a factor week to week. It's just the NFL can be humbling. <laughs> and uh, it was a humbling experience today. There's no question about it. Any injuries that maybe we did not see? I mean, Hendrickson went out of the game for a little short period of it, came back. Anybody else that, that you saw? No, not that I'm aware of. But uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't anything. A lot of times they They'll show up, uh, you know, the next day after you wake up in the morning or whatever, but nothing that uh, nothing that I'm aware of at this point in time. The Bengals will be looking uh, again. They will be traveling to Kansas City after the holiday. Um, that is going to be a big game. I mean, that's uh, the Bengals and Chiefs have had some classic games here the last few years, but a lot of different pieces, especially on the Bengals' side. Um, and maybe, again, another game without Jamar Chase is a possibility. <coughs> Talk a little bit about going forward and heading to Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, in Kansas City, it's a little bit different uh, different uh, composition to the Kansas City Chiefs than than what the Bengals uh, played, you know, here recently. And and the, uh, the 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 Bengals are in the same boat. I mean, they've got they've got different uh, people available to them because of because of the injury as well. Again, that's just uh, that's just the nature of the beast, you know, in the National Football League. But as long as number 15 is back there throwing the football. That football team, Kansas City Chiefs, are are a force to be reckoned with. There's no question. Lab, we know we have to keep these short on the road games. You have to get the bus to get back to Cincinnati. Uh, you've been listening in the trenches with Dave Lap, presented by First Star Logistics. Again, final reminder: take part in the great giveaway First Star Logistics is doing each week. Uh, the Bengals play during this season. Awesome gifts have been given away so far. Lap, your final thoughts before you head out. Yeah, final thoughts. Obviously, uh, you know, major disappointment. Uh, this was totally unexpected, um, you know. But it, it does happen. I mean, the, and again, I think the the lesson that uh, that has to be uh, executed here is, and I've been <laughs> learned it the hard way, 
both ways. You cannot let one bad performance affect the next one, particularly when there's only two left. And if you win those two football games, you still have a chance to be in the playoffs. So you can't let this linger. You have to have the 24-hour rule. You can mourn the issue 24 hours, look at the tape, correct your mistakes, and get back to work and enjoy a, a, a Christmas holiday uh, in the meanwhile. He is Dave Lapham. And, Dave, we want to wish everybody out there on In the Trenches and the First Star Media Group who take part and listen and watch In the Trenches with Dave Lapham a great holiday coming up. But we will be back in the trenches at the First Star Logistics Studios later this week. Dave, have a safe trip back. All right, Dave. Merry Christmas. Hope you and your family and friends enjoy yourselves. And uh, we'll, we'll be back in the natty here shortly. All righty. He is Dave Lapham. You've been in the trenches yes, with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. Again, reminder, take part in the First Star Logistics giveaway each week the Bengals play during this season. For Dave Lapham, this is Dave Burke. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.